surrounded in this modern world, and particularly in this, uh, this television studio, with electromagnetic radiation. It's all around us and goes through us, and some people are convinced that it makes them sick. Urban myth or a genuine cause for concern? Well, Brian Steen is a businessman. Stein, I'm so sorry, is a businessman who says that he can't have anything electrical in his office. It would make him feel ghastly because it does. Uh, Sarah Dacre says she's only able to sit in this studio because she's wearing electromagnetic proof clothing under her normal clothing, which we'll show us in a minute. And also here, nuclear physicist Dr. Paddy Regan, who says Brian and Sarah and people like them may well be feeling rotten and ill. But they're wrong. It's got nothing to do with electricity or electromagnetic fields or anything like it. Um, I know you're going to tell him he's wrong. Uh, how, when did this start occurring to you? Um, 99, some weird sensations started to happen to me whilst I was using a mobile phone. How long were you... How, how, have you been a, a user of mobile phones for, for a long I time? I used it for about 15 years and for 14 years, no problems at all. I was right. one of these people that didn't get a good reception, so more masts, more masts, more masts. Yeah. And then in my 15th year of using a mobile phone, I started to experience this quite weird sensation. So, phone to my head, weird sensation, took it away, sensation went away. And what was it? A tingling or what? It was uh, a pain that mm. uh, started to become quite extreme in my ear, as right. well as tingling sensations and a bit like uh, my nerve ending starting to be agitated. And when did this extend to electrical equipment? I mean, you know, we've been to your office and had a good yeah. look around. You've got nothing there. You've, you've, you haven't got a computer. You've just got a, a very basic battery-operated calculator. Correct. Your bedroom at home, you haven't got a television in there. Um, how did it spread to other electrical devices? Well, one day, after about a year of being a bit sensitive, although mm. I cut down on my use of a mobile phone, sadly I didn't stop, and I used a mobile phone, and putting it to my head, there was like a, an explosion in my eardrum mm -hmm. exploding. Uh, very painful experience, and that's when I swore I wouldn't use a phone by, mobile phone again. And then what I found over the next few weeks and months is the weird sensations that I'd had a year earlier using my mobile phone, mm -hmm. I started to get in front of a television, in my car, uh, in front of a computer, and, and how, 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 more sick, how sick do you get, what, apart from this sort of strange sensation in your ear, what else happens to you? In my particular case, it's very severe. So, for example, these weird sensations that I would get would then spread to my face, my tongue, my lips, my throat, and then the day before you get the flu. Yeah. Just like that. Mm. And if I got away from the, the field, it would go away. Will you be ill after appearing here tonight? Will you... I will have terrible tinnitus tonight, but in the extreme... Because of, because of sitting in the studio? Because of sitting in the studio. All right, well, let's just move on to you, uh, Sarah. I've got it slightly wrong. In fact, the drape, the little shawl that you have over you, that's your protective mesh. What's, right. it, what's it made of? It's uh, called Swiss bobbinet. It's um, covered in silver silver um, metal. Filaments, yeah. 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 And uh, if you look at it under a microscope, it's got about nine threads per honeycomb. Mm -hmm. And it just actually, if you test your um, environments with the smog detector, mm. it'll cut it out by about smog 19... Smog detector. Well, yeah. it's like electrical smog. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm protected under this. You had a very successful career working in television. Yeah. So you worked in studios amongst tons and tons of electrical equipment. And, yeah. and how long ago did you start to get sensitised to what you believe to be this? Uh, well, two years ago, my career just came to a, a grinding halt. Why? What happened? Um, I started feeling um, headaches, pains, palpitations. My right eyesight actually went to zero. Uh, they gave me glasses, which I then returned once I shielded my environment and took a step back from mm -hmm. living, really. Um, I can't have mobile phones on in my house or my office. I'm two hours only on a, a computer during the day, and that's about it. And, and the what... reason that you both think, that you, and you think, that this is because of electromagnetic fields is because it only occurs when you go near electrical equipment. Yeah. Driving through here, I've turned my detector on, a lot of masts, a lot of smog driving through wherever we've mm. driven here to. And it was screeching, actually, and mm. my eyeballs get very, very Let hot Let me explain now. the most extreme. Really quickly, I, I, yeah. I yeah. took part in the Essex studies where they're trying to detect people who are electrically sensitive. Mm. I was in the room, double blind, that was shielded, and you don't know whether the mast is on or off. I was in the room for an hour, they wanted to know whether I thought it was on or off, and I said, well, I think it's on, but I will know within a few hours. And you have a form to fill in and send it back to them. Mm. By that night, I was exhibiting extreme pain, and I started bleeding internally. And the mast had been on? And the mast... Well, I had the results from Essex study, and it told me... Uh, I'd written down, mm. they had got it, 100% certain the mast was on. It turns out the mast was on, but because I was so severely affected, uh, and couldn't finish the tests, they're not going to take my experiences into account. OK. OK. Paddy, what, what, what do you make of all this? 
I mean, I mean, they're very harrowing personal experiences, and I, I certainly would not uh, belittle the potential. Um, I'm sure people actually exhibit and feel these symptoms, but I mean, the, the fact of the matter is, in the published literature um, by, for example, the International Commission of Non-Ionising Radiological Protection, and which is sponsored by the World Health Organization, they don't have an axe to grind particularly. Mm -hmm and our own health protection agency and they've done lots of studies in this and they find no statistical evidence to back up so that there is a causal effect. Are you saying it's a psychic phenomenon? Well, uh, I mean, my, my colleague um, Dr James Rubin from the, uh, um, from the uh, Institute of Psychiatry at uh, King's College in London, I mean, he's, uh, he's done a study where a review basically where he's looked at all of the he considers to be the, the useful literature in the subject yeah. and, and all the studies have been around, and they find no causal effect. Now that, that doesn't mean that there is absolutely no effect, I mean these are personal personal well, issues we, here. Can we talk about something with the sound down here, we, we don't need the sound up in here, but just, just, just roll this here. I mean here we have an experiment, it's actually an art experiment, where fluorescent tubes oh, are yeah. placed under, directly underneath okay. um, overhead Pylons. Uh, uh, cables carried by pylons. Yeah, so. um, and obviously there's an electrical field. Uh, a lot of us who walk down yeah. the pylons feel our hair standing up and end. And it's powerful enough to, to, to ignite the gases inside the fluorescent tubes yeah. and make them react. Now, it, you know, we're but, just laymen here, but... If, it does that, a, it's a dramatic it, picture, that. And, uh, uh, but sure. Uh, from, I mean, that's a perfect example. So, as a scientist, I can explain exactly why that happens. Mm -hmm. And you can't use science to explain why that happens and then disregard the science when, no, no, uh, no, 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 all we're saying is it does prove there is, there is a proven electromagnetic it pr it, it field it. around... It, well, any, any, any motion of electrons, any motion of current will give rise to an electromagnetic field. Right. You have that in your television or, or you, any, in old telephones, well, if you, you like. You know, George Carlo was in charge of the research yes. in America. Yes. And what he found was that in tests, DNA damage, yep. blood-brain barrier damage, and cell tissue was being da damaged at levels significantly below the levels that are permitted. Well, as soon as he found the below the levels, the levels that we all well, use, well, we aren't, and sadly, obviously, yeah. I'm not going to resolve this at all tonight. But um, we did want to, to at least have a brief discussion yes. about it. You're saying no scientific evidence. You're saying sorry. Excuse me. Can I interrupt quickly. and say, in the UK, I've got acres of research mm. in Germany, America, Sweden. Um, Japan, I can send you bookloads well, of it. We'll come back to it then. Yeah. Thank we you. have nothing Th to prove. No, right. Th thank you all very much indeed. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Now,